How's it going, Short Kings? You might notice something's a little bit different this time around. If we look in the bottom left of the screen, a little college football revamped. Um, we will most likely still do some uh, North Main State. However, I want to start a new dynasty with one of the new teams in this uh, college football revamp mod because this game looks beautiful on the RPCS3 and I would really like to try out one of these new teams. Our coach for this dynasty is going to be Brandon Goon, 26 years old out of Ohio, pretty young for the position, but uh, I think maybe we can do something uh, running uh, a one-back offense, kind of focusing more on the run than the pass, getting pretty aggressive. And then uh, on defense, we're going to be trying out a 4-3, seeing what we can do with that. Obviously, things could be subject to change depending on personnel and how well we feel like we're, uh, we're going for it. And then again, trying to stop their run. If teams want to pass on us, I typically feel more comfortable with that. Uh, you know, makes them liable to make mistakes. But as it stands, I would love to uh, just shut down any sort of running game that we come up against. For this dynasty, we're going to be obviously selecting one of the teams that to this point has been updated. Uh, we have all of this sorted out properly into the right conferences. Um, and, you know, Turquoise Field... Kind of wins my heart. Coastal Carolina, new to the game, not a super high overall team, which means things won't be too easy. Uh, it puts us into a, a, a good sunbelt where we're, we're able to see some interesting stuff and we have a chance to move forward. Uh, but again, the turquoise field, how could we not? These guys have struggled uh, up to here, so it seems like a great place to take over. And hopefully we don't get fired within this initial four-year contract. Uh, maybe shooting for a bowl on the first season, but let's just uh, let's just try to get more than one or four or two or three wins. Uh, let's shoot for maybe a winning season. Now we are on the slow uh, level up or upgrade path, but I always start at level three because. Uh, Personally, I find it kind of ridiculous to, to start with only level one scouting. So we go on the slow upgrade path, but we give ourselves the ability to scout off the bat. Uh, defensive coordinator has one upgrade. We're going to go with the recharge right away. And same thing at offensive coordinator. We'll go up tempo. We want to we want to uh, fatigue less quickly. We don't want those injuries. So. Those are the uh, skills that I like to max out first for my coordinators. Before we scout or redshirt anybody, we should take a look at our depth chart and make some decisions based off of that. The young redshirt freshman, Grayson McCall, is who the game is going to put up at the uh, front of the board here for us. And I think I have to agree. And just to be safe, I think that uh, we will probably redshirt Junior Bryce Carpenter so that we have uh, a little bit of extra depth there in case maybe something terrible happens in our recruiting and we can't manage to pick up a quarterback quickly enough. At running back, uh, we're going to let CJ take the, the reins. Highest overall makes the most sense, even though... Maybe the slower the backs, and Reese White being our backup, the sophomore, gets uh, that burst of speed that maybe we need in, in some interesting situations. Jones at fullback is the obvious choice. Uh, wide receiver, we're going to be looking for some speedier players to uh, maybe fill out this depth chart. But as it stands, we won't be making any changes. The biggest changes that we're going to be making on this depth chart will be to our punt return and kick return. We're going to have Aaron Diggs and probably Reese White be our uh, two kick return, punt return guys. I would put Reese first since he is a ball carrier. However, because he is our backup running back and, and hopefully we uh, get to see him pretty frequently, we don't want to you know kill his stamina. We want him to be able to get more running in. 
um, outside of special teams. So now we'll redshirt a few players and we're pretty much just going to go lower on the depth chart and grabbing guys who most likely won't see a lot of playing time and three true freshmen at running back uh we're gonna we're gonna sit them all for a year um you know worst case scenario some of these guys were able to burn their red shirt if we really need them but we want to make sure that uh we have as much going for us as possible jack franklin the senior believe it or not we're gonna red shirt him but this way, we keep uh, some talent on the team as long as possible. Uh, we won't necessarily get into worries about not signing enough scholarship players. And it'll allow us that opportunity to uh, hopefully let these guys grow into bigger talents. So with that figured out, let's go ahead and look to see what we have early in the uh, in the recruiting game. See maybe if there are some big players that we could pick up. Right off the bat, I'm always going to take a look at the top 100 just to see maybe if there's a player that is really interested in us. Obviously, uh, it's going to be pretty rare. We'll look here. Team grades, pretty low. We're not going to get a whole lot of bonus points with players, so we have to be uh, pretty committed to uh to finding players that want to play for us and making sure that we recruit them and we're not going to add any sort of crazy recruiting restrictions onto this dynasty at this point so right off the bat we'll just sort by interest and, and look for some players see if we can find guys who seem like they would be a good fit and especially that want to come play for us so right off the bat the wide receiver, Jonathan Williams, not the quickest guy, definitely a possession receiver, but uh, he has us first on his board. We're a three star uh, there. I, I think I like that, but we'll fill out the board and uh, see where we're at. So we have got all 35 positions on our board filled. We're going to go ahead and scout just kind of the higher overall guys. You can see maybe we're reaching in in a few spots some of these guys have some interest in us um you know it's not great on a lot of them if we look at top schools but some of these guys i mean in the lead with a 68 overall tackle uh 68 overall defensive end like some of that is very very good and of course i had to add the punter named bobby ghouls because that's that's just such a great name but we'll do some scouting and we'll see i mean some of this could be really impressive Unfortunately, it looks like some of these guys are dropping, but we don't expect them all to be great. Ooh, first bust with Marcus Frederick, uh, one of the punters we were looking at. Uh, but as long as, like, if we're in the mid-60s, I think that would be solid enough for, uh, for recruits coming to play for us. And I'm impressed, I think, so far with the talent of some of these guys as Bobby Goolsby does go up to a classic 69 overall. And I don't know. I just think that oof, Phil Bonner, one of the few quarterbacks we're looking at, is a bust. I think that uh, some of this talent is definitely going to end up here. And I think we'll be maybe pleasantly surprised at, at our recruiting class. We are in a very recruit dense. Oh my gosh, another quarterback that we look at is a bust. That's brutal. We are, however, in a, in a pretty uh, talent dense area, talent dense part of the country. So. Hopefully uh, that pays off. We did look at quite a few of our pipeline states. And I got to say, I'm impressed with the, the talent uh, that we scattered right away. And just so we know, our, our pipelines currently are Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, and North Carolina. So we got, we got the South right now. Uh, maybe if we could s expand a little bit, that would be nice. But again, we're looking a ton in those states. So it's likely that we'll hold on to them. Um, but if we can start to pick up some other states, that would be fantastic as well. Our schedule for this year is definitely not going to be the easiest. We're going to open the season against LSU on the road. Take a bye week to uh, hope we're most likely lick our wounds after uh, what is probably going to be a pretty ugly game. We will then host Charlotte in week three. Then we'll go across the country to play in the Rose Bowl uh, at UCLA. And then we open up uh, our conference play against Georgia State. And we have Georgia Southern. We then play Troy, uh, the Rage and Cajuns. 
South Alabama, ULM, Texas State, Appalachian State, uh, and then we'll we'll end the regular season in Week 15 against Arkansas State. I'm curious to see what we get. I think that a lot of these conference games will be winnable. It's a question of uh, whether or not we execute. Uh, and I'm definitely expecting losses against our Power 5 opponents in LSU and UCLA. Hopefully we can take it to Charlotte. We do get to play them at home, so that'll be, uh, that'll be pretty interesting. With all that done, let's go ahead and start the season. Now, one of the benefits of playing this uh, on the RPCS3, I think I'm saying that right, uh, is that we get a runoff of my computer's hardware instead of an old PlayStation or an old Xbox. So things actually move pretty quick. Uh, it's it's a nice change of pace. We get through these loading screens surprisingly quick. Uh, like even, even these starting the season ones go by pretty quick. I mean, it's already done. We get some XP for finding a few busts and uh, we're into week one. Right off the bat, we'll take a look here at the uh, preseason polls. Obviously, it's no surprise to see Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, Oklahoma, LSU, Penn State, Florida, Oregon, and Notre Dame in that top 10. But the question is, how far down this list are we going to have to scroll before we see Coastal Carolina? Down into the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. I'm a little bit worried that we might be in the triple digits. 98, 99. Oh, no. We're going to have a long ways to go to uh, to climb up and, and maybe one day get ranked. But you never know. Maybe we pull off some ridiculous upset uh, against LSU this first week. 108th in the preseason, surrounded by San Jose State and Nevada. Uh, a lot of Mountain West there. Hopefully we can get things done. You can see we're currently a 77 overall with an 80 defense. So B minus on the defense is not too bad. Um, I'm curious how we will actually play. An interesting Heisman watch list to start. You got Tavian Robinson coming out of Virginia Tech. Obviously Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. But then you got Mac Jones and Najee Harris. So two players from Clemson, two players from Bama, and then uh, Virginia Tech wide receiver topping the board preseason. This is going to change uh, pretty dramatically, I think, as the season moves forward. Now, we don't have any preseason All-Americans, but maybe, just maybe, we get somebody first team all Sunbelt. There we go. Uh, our, our punter and our free safety, Braden Matt. So... Uh, maybe, I mean, our defense is the better unit. Uh, maybe, uh, Mats is the guy to look out for on that defense. How about second team all conference? Any honors, uh, on that? No. So two players total. Let's, uh, let's prove the, this conference wrong. We will be going into the third toughest place to play in the country against LSU. They're only an 88 overall. Uh, maybe we have a chance here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a slaughter. Herb Street obviously is going to go for uh, the Tigers. I got to think maybe, maybe we have some sort of trick up our sleeves on this one, but I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not feeling too confident. And we can go ahead and see what we are given uh, in this mod for the uniforms. So helmet wise, we have the white helmet. We have the black helmet to work with. So we'll probably be seeing a lot of the black helmet this year. Jersey. I don't know if we can look at all of these because we are the away team, but we have the white, the black uh, and the teal. And I got to be honest, the full teals are going to be uh, pretty interesting on our on our home turf. Pants wise, it's going to be teal, white, and black. And I really like the stripes at the bottom of these black pants. And I'm tempted to uh, to go with a lot of black for this opening game. But I think that we're actually going to go in and go with a little white out as we, uh, as we head in to LSU. 
And again, we'll be featuring, especially these teams that we play that have been updated by the mod team already. We'll be taking a look at uh, a lot of the uniform stuff, just so that you guys can see if, if you haven't already seen it, uh, the new updates to uniforms that are a part of uh, this revamped mod. So, I mean, we can just look at the at the presets and, and there's a lot of cool stuff. The helmets, the jerseys, the pants, even the gloves have been updated um and there's so many so many cool things that these guys have so if we look you know multiple uh multiple helmets all sorts of jerseys available and i don't even think that uh, some of these teams all of the uh jerseys will be able to see just because i think the home and away can kind of mess with it but uh we're gonna go ahead and i want to see that alternate two preset i think it looks pretty pretty cool and uh gosh i guess we'll get into this i can't really stall much longer again one of the joys of getting to do this on the computers that loading into games is pretty quick um i will warn you there's a chance that we have some instability um and the audio might get a little bit choppy during certain things if the crowd goes crazy um it's not fully stable in terms of the audio um but we're gonna do what we can uh as I, as i figure some things out to uh to get it as as good as possible um let's get into it it truly uh, just updating the graphics package uh you know as much as they can to make logos and all that look uh, a little bit more sharp is truly done uh, a number to uh revitalize this game let's see if we can do something though Starting uh, starting the season here, week one. I'm not feeling too confident. We're going to go with Tails because obviously Tails never fails. And uh, you know what? Typically, we would kick the ball off. We're going we're gonna to start with the ball and see what we can do. Our adjustments have been made. The kick is away. And uh, we're going to see what we can do. Diggs bringing out of the end zone. Has a couple of blocks. Gets past some guys. And is down at about the 34 yard line absolutely massive for coastal carolina and we'll see what the offense can do we'll see what we can manage to do running the counter on first down we pick up a block and get a yard um uh, but i don't know we're, we're gonna try to run but i don't know if this is a team that we can run very well against second and nine we're gonna go to the air looking for a quick pass and we f <laughs> that's not who I meant to throw there, as you can kind of hear some of the audio glitches I'm talking about. We find Javon. I was throwing for Denmark, but uh, I'm going to take the first down regardless. And again, off on this first down, that's going to be a loss of a yard. As I think that this LSU team is going to be almost too good. We got to try to stick to our guns running as much as possible, but it looks like they want to bring some pressure. So we're going to audible out of this. Maybe we find somebody deep. Let's hope that the offensive line holds. And no, couldn't get the pass off in time. It was going to be a 50-50 ball either way, but instead we take a sack and it's third and a... Gosh, I, it's too long to, for me to count. Uh, I can't count that high. Hoping for a miracle on this third and 20. Try to keep the drive alive. We're going to lob it up and it's luckily not intercepted. Couldn't find the tight end and we're going to have to punt this one away. It's time to see what the defense is capable of. We're going to be running the two-man under out of this 4-3 to start. And oh, broken tackle early and a quick 11 yards for Chris Curry. I've got a feeling it's going to be like this all game as they put it on the ground again and he's... He's gone. <laughs> 25 more yards. LSU, they're, they're going to dominate us here. Unless we figure something out. Switch into the zone for a play. Feels like maybe they go to the air. And the pass is just incomplete on a little bubble screen. So our first defensive stop of the game comes from a play where the quarterback just misses his man. Forces a second and 10. And he's going to be forced to throw that one away. So we've got them in a third and 10 situation. Maybe we hold them to a field goal. It would be a pretty big victory, I think, for the defense if we prevented them from scoring a touchdown. And, you know, they complete it, but it's short of the line to gain. Fourth and three. We're going to see a field goal attempt from LSU. And he puts it in 
Three nothing Tigers. Could be worse as Georgia falls week one here to a number 13 Texas A&M and we have our first top 10 upset of this season. So on our first drive out, the running didn't work. The passing, we got lucky for it to do as much as it did. So I, I don't know what we're going to do. CJ managing to pick up five yards there. Uh, if we could do that, we would be fantastic. Bringing the tight end in motion. We are going to run again here on second and five. Picking up blocks where we can. And there's some space to run. It's a 10-yard pickup as we cross, I think, the 40-yard line there. So while we started this drive with worse field position, we've already seen a lot more success and another three-yard carry there. Could it be that we uh, run a little ground and pound and, and find some points ourselves? Second and seven, it looks like they want to bring a blitz. So we're actually going to go for uh, a quick pass, see if we can find somebody open. And the quick slant is there for Brown, and he's across midfield, across the 45 for 13 yards. Now, the sliders that we're using, obviously, on Heisman. Uh, there will be an image linked in the comments if you're curious as to what we're using. Uh, the same stuff that we use on our Twitch over at uh, twitch.tv slash goonmaster. That was another great run. So maybe in field goal range here is we'll try the play action. LSU getting beat. I hit the wrong button. We're, we're still going to find Greg uh, Latushko. I'm assuming that's how you say it for another first down. And just like that, we're inside the red zone. So definitely, as long as we hold on to the football, definitely coming away with points here. Question is, how many is it going to be? CJ only picking up nine on that carry. Second and nine. Oh, <laughs> no, Reese White. I'm surprised he's still alive. Just got absolutely leveled behind the line. It's a loss of two. See what we can do on this third and 11. Home field advantage going crazy. That's a terribly risky throw into double coverage. It's incomplete, and I think that we're lucky for that. So we are going to settle with the relatively, I'm going to hope, easy field goal right up the middle. And with 42 seconds left in the first quarter, it is a tie game against the number six LSU Tigers. First and 10, LSU is going to go to the air and there's a completion and it's a quick seven yards. Uh, it's going to be lucky as you can hear now uh, the audio kind of bugging out all over the place. It's going to be lucky if we can manage to uh, hold these guys to another field goal. And that's on me for leaving the running back wide open. Tried to maybe bait that to get a pick, but couldn't get to it in time. They're going to put it on the ground here towards the edge. Uh, obviously, my user missing a tackle and allowing them to pick up 15. First and 10, another handoff, kind of cutting it outside. And there we go. Kelly getting the tackle. Second and seven here at the end of the first quarter. I think it's uh, we're pretty blessed to be tied up at the end of one. This, uh, I, I think that's good news for us. This could be very dangerous, but to start the second quarter, second and seven, we're bringing the blitz. They throw the screen. There's a broken tackle. Another broken tackle, and they're inside the red zone. Pressure up the middle doesn't work that time for us as they just throw the quick screen. And oh, they're moving the ball real quick now. I think our biggest problem in this game is going to be uh, getting any sort of defensive line penetration as Miles Brendan just missed a man. They're only five of eight passing and we have them in another third down. Expecting a pass out here to the right on third and five. They do have trips right. It doesn't show up. They're going backcourt of the end zone and they're saying it was incomplete. He was out of the end zone. I don't know about that. I think this could get reviewed and overturned and they are going to take a look at it. Let's see, how close is this one? Ooh, I wouldn't be surprised if they give the Tigers the touchdown. They do give it to them. Not holding LSU to another field goal attempt there. It's going to be 10-3. And I was really hoping maybe we had held them to six points there. That was a miserable return. So starting inside the 15 on this drive, we've got a long ways to go with 5-11 in the half. And we're going to lose or just get back to the line of scrimmage on first down. Going to try the slip screen here on second down. And I took the sack. He, I, I don't know what the heck happened there. So hopefully we don't pick up a sack, but 
We've got to make sure just that we get the pass off and that one's way underthrown and it's caught by Latusko. Off of the tip, he goes down, gets it, and it's a first down for Coastal Carolina. What concentration to come up with that grab. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous that we're still on the field. But first down's a first down, and we get a decent three-yard carry on that one. Oh. So from that one, it seems like McCall, maybe not the strongest arm. We're going to lose a yard and have another third down. But uh, good to know that we can't necessarily throw up bombs here. Third and eight. Not really too much pressure coming this time. Tough throw. Fountain comes down with it. It's fourth and two. And we have to go for this. This is obviously not the good spot to turn the ball over. But if their coverage is going to be so bad, if they're going to leave Fountain so wide open, it's going to work perfectly in across midfield. 28 yards. Dion goes. His second catch in a row. And I just don't know where the coverage is. Great throw, great juke to make the safety miss. And just like that, we we're across the 40 yard line. This offense has been showing streaks of brilliance as we'll put this one on the ground and pick up a couple of yards that way. I'm not sure how much luck it's going to take to get into the end zone, but if there was a team to get it, it would be us now. And <laughs> we continue to get luck as there's another dropped interception. I don't know what I'm doing there. Not finding anybody open. We're going to scramble with McCall on third and six. There's a lot of room, and he slides across the 20 into the red zone. He is much quicker than I expected. Easily able to outrun those LSU defensemen and getting us another first down there. Almost more importantly, we have burned a large amount of clock on this drive. Two minutes to go now in the half. And it looks like there's a chance that we could even score a touchdown as CJ picks up another four yards. Hoping for the best on this one. Trying to follow our blockers, taking a shot. Thankfully, thankfully sorry, we're able to fall forward to the line of scrimmage. Third and six, we're going to go to the air again. And again, I don't see anybody open. Except, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> we get the pass off. I panicked there. I probably could have scrambled for it. I think this is fourth and inches. Inside the 10 yard line, looking for a first and goal. We have a backup in here. Peyton's in. And we're going to go with the QB sneak on this fourth and inches. Has the first down. And there's that first and goal. So, new quarterback. And on first and goal. Throwing up a tough one. Brown had it. Oh, he caught it like right at the goal line, but his momentum carried him the wrong way. It's going to put us at the three yard line. We're going to hand it off to the running back up the middle here on second and goal. So we put a guy in motion, kind of fake it, and CJ gets in for the touchdown once again against number six LSU. We have tied the game up, and that was the last play of the half. I did, I was not paying attention to the clock whatsoever i'm lucky that it didn't run out on me that was close to a disaster but going into the locker rooms it's 10 all we're gonna basically have a brand new game starting with the second half um goodness you know our defense doing a surprising job at the offense has made some very clutch plays to keep drives alive to keep moving down the field and uh to you know not allow the lsu defense to tell them what's going to happen in this game Unfortunately, it's not all uh, sunshine and rainbows for Coastal Carolina. We have started this game with our starting quarterback now out for four weeks with an abdominal tear. You hate to see it, but, uh, you know, hopefully the backup can get it done. I just don't know how we're necessarily going to continue to hold these guys, but first and ten... Uh, LSU back out on the field. You know, if we can just keep matching them, even if we lose the game, if we keep it close, I'll call it a win. Man in motion on second and five. Expecting a run now. They do hand it off, and we meet him behind the line of scrimmage. It's third and six, and uh, I was able to read that one the whole way. And now we have a chance on LSU's only second third down of the game to maybe make them punt it away. Quarterback looking deep. We have a man there. He comes down with it. Oh, he breaks a tackle as well. Breaking free inside the 20 down at the 15-yard line. 
We had a man there. He just couldn't come up with the 50-50 ball. So what looked like it was going to be us maybe getting the ball back after uh, after a defensive stop is now LSU in the red zone. And, okay, we do get the sack, so maybe we can hold them to a field goal here anyways. We do have to remember that this defense is ranked 80 overall. So they, uh, they have some skill. There is some talent there as we forced a third and a mile here. Third and 18. All that we have to do now is make sure that we don't give up that first down and we should be okay. And it's a missed pass. So fourth and long, they're going to have to kick the field goal. And who knows, maybe there's a chance they miss it. Kick is up, and it is good. 13 to 10. So, you know, there's a chance we could take the lead here. I don't expect it to happen, but we're going to allow Diggs to come out of the end zone on this return. He's got some blocks. Diggs breaking free across the 45-yard line on the kick return. This game feels like it could have some sort of miracle in it. As we're going to go with the read option, handing it off to the running back and picking up a quick six yards here. That puts us at midfield just like that. The running games has served us well. This could be risky. We're going to go the play action. It looks like they're going to bring pressure. And I got to try to get rid of it, but I can't throw it away in time. So it's a loss of 10 on the sack. Third and long for us now. Third and 14. Not sure where we're going to find the, uh, the yards that we need, but maybe there it is. Deep ball incomplete. I don't think I threw it soon enough. He had a step on his man. Just couldn't keep up. Fourth and 14 here. We're going to go for it. Go into the air. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. Oh, almost took the sack. Couldn't get the ball out well enough. And it's a turnover on downs. Oh, this could be where it falls apart. I don't know if we were going to find a man open, but that was our best chance. Bringing a big blitz on this first and 10, kind of expecting them to go and put it on the ground, and they will. And the blitz pays off, only allowing two yards there. Second and eight, they're going to go with the option pitched out, and we make the stop. Uh, it's basically a gain of a half a yard, and it forces them into third and seven. It truly feels like our defense has done a great job in this game. We just can't quite make those clutch plays yet as they are going to get knocked out of bounds. What a crazy hit as uh, Gilbert's able to find that first down. That was so incredibly close to a stop. Kind of disappointing. So, uh, expecting the run here. They're going to go with the screen. We get picked up. He's got a lot of room to work with the 5, the 10, and LSU will score a touchdown. Well, we need to make sure that we're moving quick now as uh, this is a great handoff on first down. Isn't down yet. Stands back up and gets the first down. And it's time for a little hurry up. I know that it's unlikely that our passing game is going to work very well. But we got to do what we can as uh, Fred Payton now one of four through the air. I think we really got to be passing as much as possible here. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's going to work all that well. However, we find uh, Javon there for first down. So back across midfield, but we got to make sure that we're scoring touchdowns at this point in the game. This is a run that goes for just a little bit and uh, and in 30 left in the quarter, in the third quarter, we're, we're in trouble. Second and eight, handing it off again. And there's just no blocking loss of two. Got to hope for the best on third and 10. I think I see it. It's Fountain catches it in stride, picks up 16 yards, and we get the first down. So I think we kind of have to be passing at this stage in the game. Seems to be just about the only thing that's working for us as we'll go over the middle to Denmark, who's able to get eight yards there. Peyton making a couple of nice throws now. We find uh, Latushko again. It's another first down. Go into the air again. There's Denmark. Can he get into the end zone? The five? No, it is a first and goal, though. Not enough fight for the touchdown, but we are threatening to score. And as risky as it seems, we're going to give this to Denmark on the jet sweep. First and goal. No, quarterback kept it. I don't know how I did that, but the quarterback keeper got us a yard. And, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. You know, it's a shame because I didn't want to keep it, and I think if we hand it off, we might have had a touchdown there. But going into the fourth quarter, down 10. Chance to make it a three-point game here. 
Uh, we just got to make sure that we score the touchdown. On second and goal. In the fourth quarter, easy touchdown. 17 to 20. We're going to take a risk here. Expecting these guys to run the ball a ton. We're going to go with an engage eight on the start of this drive just to see if we can make it uh, a bad first down. <laughs> They're going to go to the air. Oh, this could be devastating. Strong. Great open field tackle. We only give up seven yards there. I think if you're LSU, you have to feel uh, a little bit foolish that you didn't score a touchdown on that play. Um, however, they might get it here. Downfield blocker available. I missed one tackle. Just like that, they're across the 45-yard line. For Centen, another screen. Bush can't get the tackle. Oh, our up and field tackling has been not impressive in this first game. Going to bring some pressure here on second and two. And unfortunately, just not enough to get the stop. Chris Curry goes eight yards. Big first and 15. They put it on the ground. A lot of room to work with. And he's going to pick up almost all of it there. Just like that. Now it's a second and one. We're going to continue to bring as much pressure as we can here. We, we can't allow them to run the ball on us like this. And unfortunately, <laughs> even bringing as much pressure as we are, they're still getting massive gains. Handoff there. Oh, bad user and a broken tackle. That's just about a touchdown. Second and goal for these guys. They're going with the... Uh, the hurry up here four minutes to go in the game we're gonna go with the engage eight is the pressure there one broken tackle we could have got the stop we could have forced a third down instead it's an lsu touchdown so the hurry up passing attack is what's gonna have to get us to the end zone i think now question is where's it gonna come from there's a first down oh and we get across midfield close to a broken tackle that could have been big their coverage has been really suspect as i gotta scramble on this one and there it is. Brown comes down with it inside the 25. It's going to be a lot of chaos and a little bit of luck as we find found. And he fumbles the ball. <laughs> LSU recovers it. The first turnover of the game, and it couldn't have come at a worse time. We were driving down the field beautifully, and Fountain just took too big of a hit. Maybe the helmet on the ball can't hold on to it. Tigers recover. And I got to imagine that that is just about the ball game. Down two scores. Tigers have the ball. Less than four minutes to go. All they should be doing here is running the ball, but they're going to throw one away quick there. Second down, I guess. Second down. There's a run. And, you know, this is, I don't know, maybe a little bit foolish, but just like that, it's third and long. Defense needs to get a stop on third and eight here. And it's not its not to be done. They find big math for a quick first down. And now they've switched into the clock burning mode. So we can expect, I think, to see a bunch of run plays. As uh, they're going to look to seal this one out. And man, if we can't get the stop, bringing eight men in uh, on pressure there. We're in trouble. 33 yards given up is too much. Another broken tackle. Less than two minutes to go here. We got to take our first time out. This is another handoff, and we do get the stop, but it's third and seven, and a first down ends this game. Oh, they go in with the slip screen. Brewer there to drop the interception. But we hold them. Fourth down, and that stops the clock. <laughs> if we could have got the pick there, that would have been big. But instead, it's another field goal attempt, and... We could keep this a two-score game. He is going to hit it, though. This seems like it'll be almost impossible, but you never know. Denmark breaks a tackle. Bakju keeps him alive, and he crosses the 45. That's a quick 27 yards. If we can make the right reads here and there, we could turn this into something as... Uh, I just got to get rid of that ball. Not worth wasting any more time or risking the interception. Go into the air again. Tough throw. Denmark has it. He stays in bounds just long enough. Gets out of bounds to stop the clock and gets us a first down. Denmark on the post is kind of who I'm looking at, but instead, oh, we had Latushko just uh, a step in front of him as goes the ball. So, unfortunately, incomplete when it could have put us inside the red zone. 
Step back to pass again here, and... Lobbing this one for the end zone. No way, he comes down with it. He does! Cameron Brown, 26 yards for the touchdown. I don't know how he came down with that. It's uh, gonna be a six-point game with a minute and 25 to go. Well, we are not dead yet, but we absolutely need to recover this onside kick. I feel like that was a decent amount of power. Oh, it was a good bounce, but McMath's gonna come down with it. And we couldn't strip the ball from him. So, first down for LSU, and we only have one timeout to work with. With one timeout, it's gonna take an absolute miracle here to uh, get the ball back, and I just don't think that it's gonna be enough. They're in the shotgun, we're bringing everybody. Can we strip the ball? No, third and 13. We're just not gonna have enough time. They do need, uh, actually, I don't think they need a play. Yeah, they're just gonna take the kneel and be able to run it out on, uh, on, on this next play. I'm gonna get called for the offside. I was trying maybe to, to sneak in there. And unfortunately, LSU is just going to be able to uh, walk away lucky on this victory week one, 30 to 24. And uh, with that turnover that we had, you know, we were real close, real close to being able to win this one. I think this is a, a sign of good things to come, but unfortunately as the clock hits triple zeros, LSU is gonna be able to walk away, avoiding the upset. And uh, I don't know, I think at the end of the day, our team is actually gonna end up happier about the result of this game. LSU has much, much tougher opponents to face this season than we will. And they're gonna need to make sure that uh, they shore some things up if they wanna stay in contention for any sort of big bowl games or for the SEC championship because they can't play like this against uh, the big dogs in the conference. Meanwhile, if we play like this the rest of the season, I definitely see us going to a bowl game. 0-1 at the end of week one. Uh, that's a shame. We're going to save our recruiting at the end of this week for next episode. It's been a long one what with it being the, uh, the starting episode. Uh, but I am hopeful that this is going to go pretty well. And I'm excited to do college football revamped. I think this the what the mod makers have done is phenomenal. And the game looks, the graphics that they've changed look fantastic. And hey. Our next game, Bowling Green at home. I'm excited for you guys to get to see the teal field of Coastal Carolina because it looks fantastic. That's going to do it for us, though, today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Hopefully you guys like the college football revamped. If there's something that you want me to show in an episode, a certain team, um, they have like the Sun Belt and the SEC and the ACC and uh, maybe a few independents done if there's something that you want to see, let me know. I can we can we can maybe look through it. Um, otherwise, feel free to like and obviously subscribe. Uh, and if you want to watch this live, we're over on twitch.tv slash goonmaster. Uh, playing some normal team builder NCA as well as plenty of other sports games. Um, 2K, FIFA, PGA, all that sort of stuff. Regardless, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Chanticleers? <laughs> uh, we need a new one. The Teal Boys, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Let me know. We'll figure it out. Uh, but wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.